Hey, today's lesson should not take tons of time. Um, on page 288, okay, there are a couple, a couple terms here, square root and zero of a function. And hopefully by the end of this, if you don't already know those, you'll, you'll be able to address those. Okay, of course, concepts down there, um, the solutions of x squared equaling d. Uh, you'll also kind of come up with these intuitively after we do some problems, but it's all summarized right there. What I want to do is work through some of these with you. We, um, we started last, or we did on 9.2, we just found the solutions by graphing it and see where it crosses the x-axis. Rather than graphing every time now, uh, I want to use square roots to solve. Okay, so square ro roots work really well if you don't have a b term. So if you think of it this way, in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if you are missing this term, so you just have an x squared and a c, which, like in this one, you here would be your x squared, your ax squared, and here's your c. Okay, when you just have those two pieces, it makes it very easy to solve. You make y equals zero. Remember, because that's when you graph it, that's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so um, you make y equal to zero and you would solve okay, for those two points, or one point if there's only one. Okay, so what I want to do, let's start out with number two. Okay, take a look at that. I want you to get x by itself. Okay, what do we do to get x by itself? Yeah, just do the opposites, right? Add 25 to both sides, just basic algebra stuff x squared is equal to 25, and then how do I get rid of a squared? x times square root. Yeah, it means x times x, so we're taking the square root, so that's x is equal to the square root of 25. Now, remember, anytime you start a problem without a square root symbol, and then throughout the problem you add a square root symbol, you have to put... Plus minus. Yeah, very good, you have to put plus minus there. So we get plus minus root 25, which is positive negative 5. That is our solution. Or multiple solutions we could put in set notation like that. Remember, this isn't anything new. I mean, if we were using this graph right here, this would be negative 5 where it crosses, and that could be positive 5 right there. Okay? Yeah? Do you have to do It's just called set notation. Usually that's how you see it, so I want to show it to you like that. If you just put plus, plus minus 5 on your uh, test or something, I would give you credit. I wouldn't expect Okay, but you will see answers like that. Okay. All right, let's go back to number one. Go ahead and do the steps there to solve that one. What's the problem with this one? Yeah, it's a negative. You try to take the square root of a negative. When you multiply a number by itself, even if the number that you're multiplying by is negative, is there any way to get a negative number? Like negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and 2 times 2 is positive 4. The only way to get a negative is to multiply a positive by a negative. Okay? That's not possible with roots, or at least even roots. It is with odds. Okay, but not even, so this is a no solution. I want you to draw a very quick sketch off to the side of what that picture would look like. Just kind of off to the side here, just a real quick sketch. What would that picture look like? Without using your calculator, just like where, where does your graph hit the x-axis? Okay, something like this. It doesn't hit the x-axis. Right? I know it's split right here because there's no B term, so it doesn't move off the y-axis. Okay, I know that this point actually is, does anyone remember? X squared is down here. What are we doing to X squared here? We're moving it up 49. So this is 49 right there. Okay, but 
I just want to show there's no x-intercepts. All right. Number three, give it a go. Okay, you get x squared equals? Zero. Yeah, you subtract six from both sides, you get zero. Subtract six here and subtract six here. What times what makes zero? Zero. Zero. Okay. It is zero. You have one solution. It's at zero. Do a quick sketch of what that picture would look like. Hopefully put something like that. It should just go down, hit zero, and jump right back up. Okay, so you have your three different situations. Your no solution, your two solutions, your one solution. Okay, notice that the thing you were right next to the x squared on those, this is a plus x squared, or plus a c, this is minus a c, and then this and this are the same. Okay, that's kind of what they're getting at on your previous page here. They talked about when your d term is greater than zero, you're going to get two solutions. When your d term, thing on the other side, is equal to zero, you get one solution. When your d term is um, negative or less than zero you get no solutions so this becomes your d term right here that zero that 25 and that negative all right any questions I want you guys to go ahead and work through number 12 there finish up four through 12 work with your groupies hey um, guys I want to go through one of these like this one here negative subtract 84 you get 2x squared is equal to negative 84, and then to get rid of that 2 out in front, they're multiplying by 2, so we got to divide by 2. So you get x squared is equal to negative 42. However, when you take the root, you can't take the root of a negative, therefore it is no solution. Hey, any questions? Yes? Number 9. Number 9. All right, first step, add 49. We end up with 81x squared is equal to 25. Then divide by 81. Those cancel. Left with x squared is equal to 25 divided by 81. Divide out that 81 there. Okay, then we take the root. x is equal to plus minus the square root of 25 81st. Notice that square root symbol should all the, go all the way down, which is the same as plus minus root 25 over root 81, which is equal to plus minus 5 over 9. -er. There we got it. Um, okay. Any other questions through 12? Yeah, these are pretty easy. To, I mean, once you get them done, not too bad. Okay, let's move on to number 13. Tell your neighbor what you think you should do first. Number 13. No question. I mean, the square root of 25 is 5. Right, so then you wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. So, like 9, nope, you wouldn't either. Yeah. If they're perfect, you don't. Then you just take the square root. Okay, number 13. What do we do? Uh, we do not distribute. Oh. That would be making the problem much, much, much more difficult. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Um, you write out the problem twice. Nope, you don't do that no, either. Do that. Nope, that would make it much more difficult. How do we get rid of the square? square, square root. Take the square root. So if I take the square root of this side, these cancel. If I take the square root of that, I get plus minus zero which really doesn't mean much of anything, right? No such thing as plus minus zero, it's just zero. So you have x minus four equals zero. What's x? Negative four. Almost. Add four, four right? <laughs> x equals, not x, well x does equal x, but x equals four. Well, we got the plus minus zero, right? So we wouldn't have the positive and negative. So let's try this one. Do the first step. Number 14 might make a little more sense. Do 
doing things wrong. Okay, so we do the first step. We get x plus 2 is equal to plus minus root 14. 196, which is 14. 14. Now, what's the next step? Subtract that 2 over. Now, when I subtract 2, I have x is equal to negative x is equal to negative 2 plus minus 14. So that means I have two problems there. I have negative 2 plus 14 and I have negative 2 minus 14. x is equal to both of those. So x equals, what's negative 2 plus 14? Um, 12. It's 12, well done. And? Negative 16. Those are our solutions. Ooh. Remember, you can always check your work. If I put 12 in there, 12 plus 2 is 14. 14 squared is, or is 196. Negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14. Negative 14 times negative 14 is 196. Yeah? Um, why would you do that instead of just subtracting 14 and doing it in front? Because it has the plus minus. So it's saying negative 2 plus 14 and negative 2 minus 14. Okay. Yeah, you got to do both problems. All right, questions there? No. Okay, I want you to try number 15, please. First step, apply the root, right? So we get plus minus 7. Next step is? Subtract 7. So you get 2x is equal to negative 7 plus minus 7. Okay, so you could do the math over here right now if you want. So negative 7 plus 7 is? That's 0. And negative 7 minus 7. What's that? Good. Negative 14. That's an and sign. Negative 14. So these are your two answers right now. So you have 2x is equal to 0 and negative 14. So what's the next step? Divide by 2. So i got to divide this by 2, which cancels, but I've got to divide that and that by 2. So x is? 0 divided by 2 is? If I have a bunch of zero and I want to share it with two, pay, two people, how much do each of them get? Zero. zero. And negative 14 divided by 2 is? Negative 7. Negative 7. Those are my answers. Kind of squished there, so we'll write them here. Zero and negative 7. Usually we go numerical order, so negative 7, zero. Wes Jones. Yeah, what's the next question? All right, I want you to try 16 through 18 on your own there, or with your partner. I had a couple questions and some, I heard some confusion on this one. So the first thing, this squared doesn't affect that 16. Let's get rid of the 16 first. Divide it out first. So x minus 3. And then, to get rid of the square, take the root. Which is the same thing as 5 and 4. So we have positive, negative, 5 fourths. Is equal to x minus 3. Then we add 3. 3 plus minus 5 fourths. So 3 plus 5 fourths. Well, that's 3 plus 1 and a quarter, or 4 and 1 fourth. And then we have 3 minus 5 fourths. Or 3 minus 1 and a quarter, which is 3 minus 1 is 2. And then through 2 minus a quarter is 1, 1 and 3 fourths, or 1.75. Is 
one and one fourths and one and three fourths. I lost him there. Dealing with fractions it makes I'm it tough. Be honest with you. I, I think of it, think of it as you could think of this as three is twelve fourths as well, right? Because twelve divided by four is three. So you could do twelve plus five, which is seventeen over four, which is this, and then twelve minus five, which is seven over four, um, which is that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, I want to get you guys going on your assignment, but I want to do two more quick problems with you. Number 22. Okay, 22. says solve the equation using square roots. Round your solution in the nearest hundred. Everyone give number 22 a go. Tell your neighbor what you got there. I got x minus plus minus the square root of 6. Okay, plus minus root 6, which they want us to round to the nearest 10 or 100. So what is that? Oh. There we go. Plus minus 2.45. So we can use this one? Well, if they tell you to round, then you round. Otherwise, you leave it in simplest radical form. Simplest radical form. I don't know what that means. Totally radical. That's the plus minus root six. That, yeah. Radical. Radical. Okay, everyone give number 26 a go while I hand out your assignment. I don't know. Okay, let's take our formula. V equals one third pi r squared h. We want to get r by itself. That's what solve the formula for r means. It means get it by itself. If you didn't know what, that's, what that meant, then make a note to yourself. To get rid of the one third, I can multiply everything by... 3. And by doing that, this just cancels there. You don't have to distribute it because there's no addition or subtraction symbol. So they just cancel. So you get 3v is equal to pi r squared h. Now to get rid of the pi and the h, they're both being multiplied. So we could just divide by pi h. I know it looks weird. Those things cancel. Those cancel. I'm left with r squared is equal to 3v over pi h. Now to get rid of the square, I've got to, I've got to take the root. Plus minus 3v over pi h is equal to r. That is a lot of stuff there. Really, this just becomes like a holding spot over here where you have different variables you can plug things in for. So when they tell you the radius or find the radius of a cone when the volume is 27 pi and the height is 4, that means you can plug in the 27 for volume. I could take my equation, 3v over pi h. All of that is, we have the plus minus square root of it. It's equal to r. I can put 27 pi in right here. And I could put 4 in right there. So that ends up being plus minus the square root of 3 times 27, or 81. All divided by 4 pi. Thank you. The pi's cancel. So you get plus minus the square root of 81 fourths, which is? Square root of 81 over 4. Square root of 81 over square root of 4, or, or 9 over 2. Okay, can the radius be positive 9 halves? Can the radius be negative 9 halves? Yes, it can be either. Can you have a negative radius? No. Radius no. represents a length, therefore we ignore the rate the negative one and we just keep the positive. Nine halves. And that would be in inches. Another way of thinking of it is four and a half inches. That is our radius.